ahead and get started. My name is Katherine Wagner and I am a Senior SolidWorks Support Engineer here at CAD Dimensions in Albany and today's Lunch and Learn is going to be about multi-body design techniques. During today's Lunch and Learn we're going to be making a bocce set. If you're not familiar with bocce, it is an outdoor game played by tossing heavily weighted balls towards a marker. Depending on how closely your toss makes it to the marker, you're awarded various points and the person with the most points at the end of several rounds wins. A set will typically include eight bocce balls. The balls will be colored or marked to indicate various team combinations. The set will also include one marker and a carrier. I'm going to start off by introducing multibodies. Then we're going to move on to discuss multibody design techniques, which include multibodies as intermediate steps and multibodies as assembly alternatives. I will then recap the different design methods and conclude with any questions you might have. Introducing multibodies. We're going to discuss what they are, how they are created, and how you can tell if you're using them inside SolidWorks. Let's get started. A solid body is one continuous solid inside a single part file. So the first thing I need to do in SolidWorks is create a part. To do this I'll go up to File New, choose my Part Millimeter Template, once that's open, I'm going to go ahead and save it. Now that I have my part saved, I can go ahead and create my first solid body. For my first body, I'm going to go to my front plane and start a sketch. The sketch is going to be for one of my bocce ball profiles. It's going to be a half profile, which I will then use to revolve and make a nice spherical shape to represent the bocce ball. I'm going to use construction geometry and smart dimensions to fully define my sketch. Once the sketch is fully defined, I'm going to use my S shortcut key to go ahead and start a revolve. And now I have my first solid body. A multi-body is when you have more than one solid body in a single part file. There are several different ways that we can create multiple bodies inside SolidWorks. The first way I want to show you is to create a sketch which is not going to overlap or touch our existing solid body. So I'll go to front, start a sketch, I'm going to zoom out just a little bit and follow the same pattern I used when creating my first solid body. The only difference is that I'm going out in the opposite direction so that I will not overlap or touch my existing solid body. Use my S key, revolve this around, and now I have two solid bodies existing in my single part file. Another way we can create multiple bodies is to create a sketch with more than one contour in it. Again, I'll come to my front plane for this, and I'm going to turn on my line tool to make some small tufts of grass here. Now, these tufts of grass are not necessary for my bocce set design. Um, I'm just using this as an example for how to create multiple bodies. So I'm not going to bother with fully defining these as they're not required for my assembly. But I am going to just make sure that the bottoms are lined up and that they are not touching any of my existing bodies and that they are not overlapping any of my existing bodies. Once I know they're meeting that criteria, I'm going to go ahead and use my S key again to extrude these. And I now have two more solid bodies in my part file. The last method I want to show you for creating additional solid bodies in your part file is where you have a sketch that is touching or overlapping any of your existing bodies. So for this we'll go to our front plane again and I'm going to go ahead and just sketch a, another tuft of grass which is making contact with the existing tufts of grass but that is also overlapping my bodies here, so we'll be able to show both of these. So I now have my sketch. I can see here that it's not quite touching all the way, so I'll just make sure that that's 
locked in. Once I know I have contact to the other two bodies and overlap with the two bocce balls, I'm going to go ahead and extrude this out. And when you're extruding or revolving or simply creating a solid body where you have contact or overlap with other bodies, what we want to do is look at an option in our property manager. And this option is called Merge Result. And what it controls is the area where we are contacting or overlapping those existing bodies. When we have this checkbox turned on, SolidWorks will merge together those bodies with the new body we're creating to form one continuous solid. If I uncheck this box, SolidWorks is going to allow the new body I'm making to remain separate from the existing bodies. So if you're working with multi-bodies and you want a new feature to be its own solid body, make sure you uncheck this box before exiting the property manager. I have now created an additional fifth body in my part file. Now that we have multiple bodies in our part file, let's talk about the different ways we can identify them. In our graphics area, we can identify multiple bodies by selecting the face. When we select the face, we'll be able to see the edges where maybe our body is meeting up or touching other bodies. We can also see where it might be overlapping any existing bodies because we'll be able to see the face through the other body. So for instance, where we're making contact with the grass here, I can see the blue line um, meeting up or butting up to that other body. I can also see the edges passing through my bocce ball. So we know that that fifth tuft of grass did not merge together with any of my existing bodies. If I just click in my graphics area to deselect the face, I can also see um, the edges, which will be giving me feedback. If I have two bodies that are simply butting up to each other or making contact, I will see a black edge between them. So again, if we look at where the grass is touching, we'll see a black edge here. If I have a solid body which is passing through another body or existing in the same space because they are separate, I will see a soft edge. So let's go to an isometric view so we can see this a little bit better. When I say a soft edge, what I'm referring to is what we see here with the sphere and the grass where the two are passing through each other. There's no solid black edge here because an edge is where two faces meet up and these two faces are not actually meeting, they are simply passing through each other. So that is why we don't see a black edge even though we are in the shaded with edges mode. We can also see if we're using multiple bodies by looking at our feature manager design tree. If we go over to the tree, we'll see that I now have a folder called solid bodies. This folder will become visible when we have more than one solid body present in our part. At the end of the folder name, you'll see that it'll have in parentheses the number of bodies you have present in your part file. So in our case, we have five. If I expand this, I'll be able to see all five bodies. I can click them to highlight them in the graphics area. I can also see what features were defined by them. I can tell this from the name because the solid body will inherit the name of the last feature that was used to uh, define its shape. I could also go up to the solid bodies folder here and show feature history. And that'll add an expansion symbol to next to each of my solid bodies, which I can select to see all the features that contributed to that body shape. If I want to, I can rename any of my bodies. I can rename them by doing a slow double click or by doing an F2 command. When I rename a body, it needs to have a unique name similar to when I'm renaming my features. I can also right click on any of my solid bodies to control some of the display options. So for instance, I can hide or show a body. I can change its appearance. I could change its display state. I could also change its transparency. All those display options which were available under my right click there are also available in my display pane. The display pane is accessed by these double chevrons at the very top of our feature manager design tree. And when I expand it out, we'll see that a column for each one of these displays 
has been added and I can simply line that column up with the body to control that attribute. So if I want to, I can hide or show a body or make it transparent or change its display state or change its color. I really like to use the display pane, so I'm gonna go ahead and leave this out as we continue to work with our multibodies. Now that we know what a solid body is, what a multibody is, and how we can create them and identify them in SolidWorks, let's go back and discuss how multibodies can be used as a design technique. There are two ways that multibodies can be used as a design method. The first way is to use multibodies as a transition. In this way, solid bodies can be added to our part file in order to achieve our design intent. The solid bodies are then absorbed by other features or deleted out at the end so that our final product only has one solid body. The second method is to use multibodies as an alternative for assemblies. In this way, we can build an assembly with all of its components with the added benefit of better performance and additional features which we wouldn't have access to if we were using a top-down assembly method or in-context editing. I'm going to be using a combination of these two design techniques to build up our bocce set. Let's switch back over to SolidWorks. Looking at my bocce set, I have three separate solid bodies representing the grass. What I want to do is make a change so that those three separate bodies become one. The first two solid bodies represent, representing the grass were created through one feature and multiple contours. The third body was created by unchecking the merge result checkbox. To merge these three together, what I'm going to do is go back to the third body and turn on the box for merge result. Now when I turn on merge result, SolidWorks is going to merge anything that is touching or overlapping with the current solid body I'm about to make. So this will include the two pieces of grass and the two bocce balls. I do not want to include the two bocce balls in my merge, so what I need to do is go down to the bottom of my property manager and I have a group box here called Feature Scope. Feature Scope will automatically be turned on and have Auto Select checked, which is going to include, again, all the bodies that are touching or overlapping. If I uncheck Auto Select, I'll be able to select specific bodies that I want to apply this to. So now I'll only be merging the grass. When I merge the grass, we'll see that I only have one solid body now. And since I'm finished making my change, I'm gonna go ahead and hide it. Now that I've hit my grass, I'm gonna go ahead and move on to working on the case. For my case, I'll start a sketch on the front plane here. And I'm just gonna make a simple rectangle. And I'm going to extrude this and I'm just gonna roughly extrude it to make sure I have enough space for about you know, four bocce balls, and I'm gonna make sure that it encompasses the bocce balls that I already have. Now I can see that it's kind of sticking out there a little bit in the back, so I just changed the offset of my sketch plane to incorporate them. The last thing I'm gonna wanna do is make sure that I uncheck the merge results so that my new created solid body here for my case does not merge with any of the existing bodies. The merge result box is always going to be turned on, so we just need to keep an eye on that as we continue to make new solid bodies. As I say OK, I've now made my case. I can make this transparent and I'll be able to see the bocce balls on the inside. The next thing I'm going to want to do to my case is hollow it out, and to do that I'm going to use the shell feature. Now for the shell feature, I only want it to be affecting the case aspect of my design. So to do that, I can click down here in the solid body area and select only the case. Solid bodies are a great way to be able to localize operations so that they only affect certain aspects. So in this case, we're only going to be shelling out our case. Once I've hollowed out the case, the next thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is split this to create a top and a bottom half. To do this, I'm gonna use a tool called Intersect. With Intersect, I can select bodies, or planes, or faces. And once I have my selection, I can say Intersect, and it'll identify the different zones that have been created. I can select in this list which ones I want to keep and which ones I want to discard. I can also see them highlight as I click down the list. I'm going to want to exclude the top 
kind of area I have in my um, intersection here. And I'm going to keep the other three. I'm going to come down to merge result here and make sure I uncheck this so that the three new bodies I'm creating are going to remain as separate bodies. When I say OK, we'll see those three new bodies have been added to my tree. I'm going to go ahead and hide these as well and move on to working with the bocce balls. Now for my bocce balls, I'm going to need to create some unique patterns to indicate the different teams on each of the balls. Initially, I was considering the sweep cut and then patterning that around each bocce ball to make the markings that I desire. However, I'll find that when I try to use the feature with my circular pattern, the pattern will fail. Sometimes when I'm trying to use patterns and features, I won't be able to get the results that I want. This would be a good opportunity to consider multi-bodies because with multi-bodies, SOLIDWORKS is going to be solving some of that information a little bit differently with our pattern and we might be able to get a result with solid bodies when we wouldn't be able to with features. So I'm going to be using a sweep boss and a circular pattern to make my markings. For these two items, I'm going to need some reference geometry, so I think now would be a good time to go ahead and create that. So for my reference geometry, I'm going to go down to my front plane and just show this, and my top plane, and my right plane as well. I'm also going to make sure that both of these items, my axes and my planes, are shown from my Heads Up toolbar. Now I can create planes by using a nice shortcut in my graphics area, which is to hover over the edge of my plane and hold down control and left click drag. When I do this, I will automatically open up the plane creation property manager. I'm going to use this in conjunction with my sketches to position the new planes in the center of my bocce balls. Once I can see those sketches, I can click on the center marks to position my new plane right in the center of my bocce ball. So again, it's control, left click, drag. And in this case, it's kind of hard to see that middle marking, so I'll just rotate a little bit to the side. And now I can clearly see it. Now that I've created all the planes that I need, I'm going to go ahead and make the axes. So for these, I'll just select the planes and right click to apply. Now, if you're ever going to be repeating a feature, you can just go ahead and hit return and SOLIDWORKS will automatically start that up again. It'll just make things go a little bit faster here. Okay, and now I have all the planes that I will need. Once I have all this information, I'm just gonna go ahead and turn this off to simplify my graphics area temporarily. I'm going to allow the sketches to remain visible and just go normal to and maybe zoom to fit here. And the first thing I'm going to want to do for my sweep path, now that I have all my geometry, is to create the path. So for my path, I'm going to come to the front plane, go ahead and start a sketch, and I'm going to just create a straight line here. And I'm going to want this line to be centered on the center point of my bocce ball and I'm going to dimension it just so that it always will go slightly beyond the edge of my bocce ball. Once I have one line, I can use offset and the bi-directional checkbox to create duplicates of these on either side. And I now have the three lines that I'm going to use to create my path. Now, I need the path to wrap around my sphere, and right now my sketch is in the center of the sphere. So what I'm going to do is use the split face command, or split line, and project the sketch onto the spherical space. Now I have all of the paths that I want, and they're wrapping nicely around my sphere, so I can go ahead and hide this sketch now. Now that I am ready for, or I have my paths, I am ready for my profile, so again, I'll go normal too. And this time I'm going to do just three small circles and turn that off. And I'm going to make these equal. And then I'm going to go ahead and position them using the pierce command. Once I have these positioned, I can go ahead and add dimensions. 
And now my sketch is fully defined so I can exit out of here. And I now have the two required things for my sweep. So I will go in and select my profile and I will select my path. I'm looking for the preview. If I'm not getting the preview, there we go. Um, I'm going to go ahead now and go to options and make sure that I uncheck the option for merge results so that each of these bodies will remain separate. Now I have the three bodies to finish off this. I'm going to pattern them around. I'm not going to be using features. I'm going to be using bodies. So I need to make sure I switch group boxes and then I can select those from my tree. And I can also select the appropriate axis that I want. And I'm going to rotate this 90. My preview looks good. And I now have all the solid bodies I need to create the pattern on my first bocce ball. Let's move on to do the second bocce ball now. So again, I'm going to want to do my path first. So I'll go to my front profile. And I'm going to center this on the center mark and offset just slightly. Once I have the sketch, I'm going to project this onto the surface again with a split line. And I projected that in two directions, so it went to the front and the back. And now that I have that, I can go ahead and hide this sketch as well. And I can go ahead and use the right plane I created for my second bocce ball to start my sketch. And Make these equal and again use a pierce command to position the profiles on my sketch. And we're going to make these two. So now I have the two pieces of information for my second bocce ball sweep. So I will go ahead and turn these on. And again, not forgetting about the merge result. I now have two more bodies. I will pattern these around. Unchecking, rechecking bodies, selecting two bodies from my graphics area, and selecting the appropriate axis. So we can go this way first, 90. All right, and we're gonna go again. Make sure we go all the way. So let's see here. Maybe this time, let's do this one. We'll pick from the tree. It's a little bit easier sometimes. And I want this, 90. Okay. So now we have all the solid bodies we're going to need for our markings. What we're going to do with these solid bodies is use a function called combine and it will take the solid bodies we have and perform different uh, Boolean operations. So if I go to insert and features, I can come down and we'll see combine here in my list right above intersect. And there's three different things I can do with combine. The first one is to add. This is similar to what we would be doing if we were merging our results. So just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna pick two bodies and show a preview. And you can see that this is kind of what you would expect from the merge checkbox. Another thing you can do is select a main body and then out of that body, you can remove another body. So it'll kind of subtract whatever the second body or more that you pick um, for your tooling. So if I go show now, we'll see that I create a dent. So this is what we're going to want to do with all of the bodies we have for our markings. But before moving on, I just want to show you the last option under combine, which is for common, in which case, if you select multiple bodies, SolidWorks will only keep the area that is shared by both items. Okay, so that's kind of a unique one. So what we're going to be doing is subtract for our bocce balls. I will select the bocce ball for the main body and then select all of the sweep bodies and the patterned and the patterned bodies. I accidentally removed the main body. And when we say okay, SolidWorks will remove those. Now when SolidWorks removes those bodies, 
it actually consumes them. So you'll see that the list of solid bodies I have up here has gone down. All right, those bodies have been absorbed up into the other feature. All right, we're gonna do the same thing with our second bashi ball. So insert features combine and subtract. I will establish my main body and then select all of the bodies I want to remove. And you'll see that my list has come back down again. So now I have the two bocce balls kind of in their finished state. What I'm gonna to wanna to do now is go back to my box and take a look at filling up my box to create my set. So the box is the intersect here. And if I show both of these items, I can see the padding and the bottom half of my box. I will leave the top portion hidden so that we can see what's happening inside here. Now for my box, what I'm going to want to do is fill this up with my bocce balls. So what I'm going to do is create a pattern and I will use a linear pattern for this and I will establish my direction. Now new to 2015 inside a part file, you can use an option called up to reference. And I think this is a great application for when you're using multi bodies as an alternative for assemblies because what it's going to do is allow you to create spacing um, that you don't have to calculate. SolidWorks will come up with the spacing or it'll also come up with how many instances you want to fit some sort of spacing. So what it lets you do is you can pick a reference item. So in this case, we'll pick the back wall of our box and we can establish how far we want to let SolidWorks pattern pass that. So we're gonna say zero, so it has to stop at this wall. And then you can choose what you're measuring off that. So um, in this case, I'm gonna use the centroid since I don't have a really easy face I can grab on either of my bocce balls, but you could also use a reference on the bocce ball. I will use the centroid. And then from there, I can tell SolidWorks that I want to keep this much spacing between the bocce balls and allow SolidWorks to calculate how many bocce balls it can fit in there. Or I can do the opposite and say, hey, I only want four bocce balls, you come up with the spacing. So in this case, we're gonna let SolidWorks come up with the spacing and I'm gonna go to bodies and select the bodies that I want to pattern. Now, when I pattern these, I'll see that if I go to a side view, that the pattern is actually, you know, looks like it's poking out beyond the reference wall. Now that's due to my settings up here because I chose the centroid, which is in the center of my bocce ball. And I said that it can't go zero past it. So technically the centroid hasn't gone past the reference. So what I need to do is maybe include an offset here to account for the centroid not being on the edge of the bocce ball. So I'll make this 80 so that it matches the front of um, or the offset that I used when extruding the box. And now I can see they're all fitting inside and SolidWorks is creating the patterning for me. If I go ahead and say okay, I'll see that SolidWorks has made duplicates for me and it's fit as many as it could there in the spacing that it required. So because my box was too short and I told SolidWorks that I needed four, I have a little bit of overlap happening here. But this is the nice part about making um, an assembly with multi-bodies. It's really easy to make these changes. If I go back and all I need to do now is change the length of my box. So instead of going out 500, let's just make it 600. And when I make this change, SolidWorks is gonna recalculate everything for me, all right? So we can just see how easy that is and how nice the up to reference option is. Now, so now that I have my bocce set created here, um, last thing I need to do is work on this foam padding. So currently my foam padding is existing in the same space that I have my bocce ball. So if I were to maybe, you know, right click and hide one of these, we'll see that there isn't a pocket for my bocce balls yet. What I need to do is cut out that pocket. We just learned about a feature called combined, which would allow us to create a pocket. However, when we do combined, 
um, we'll see that the notches in my bocce ball will get included in the pocket and I don't necessarily need that detail. So when I do combine, I would want to have a version of the bocce ball before I have the notches cut out. The other thing I want to consider is that if I use combine, it has to be the exact size of the bocce ball because it's going to be consuming it. I'll need a copy that's the same size. If I want to, I can create a copy and either use a different function to add a little bit of extra space or make the copy a little bit larger. What I'm going to do is make a copy and a different tool called indent. So the first thing we need to do is go back and make our copies. So to make a copy, I'm going to roll back in time with my rollback bar to before we used the combine. And I'm just for organizational purposes, up here is where I created most of my body. So I'm just going to roll back all the way to this point. Actually, maybe I'll even go up to here. And I'm going to go ahead and create copies. To make a copy, I can go up to Insert, Features, and I have an option called Move Copy. With Move Copy, I can reposition any of the solid bodies I have in my part file, or I can make copies of them. In this case, we're just going to be using the Copy option, so I'm going to make sure that I have this checkbox turned on, and I'm going to select the two bodies that I want to copy. When I select OK, SOLIDWORKS is going to say, hey, you're not actually moving any of these. I'll say, yep, that's fine. And SOLIDWORKS will make two copies for me here. We'll see those bodies have been added. Now, while I'm here making copies, I remember that I haven't created my marker yet. So what I'll do is just really quickly go to my front plane. And let's just make a small marker guy here. And we'll put him on the origin. And uh, what I'll do is add a smart dimension. And something is missing here. I'm not sure. Oh, I didn't actually get the origin. I got just the line. There we go. Now we're fully defined. I can revolve this around. Say OK. And now I have my marker, but I'm going to want to dent for that marker, so I'll just reorganize my tree to make the move copy happen afterwards. That way I can include a copy of the marker when I make copies of the other two bodies. So now I have copies of all these items, and I can go back down. And now when I do my linear pattern, what I'm going to want to do is not only linear pattern the cutout bocce balls, but I'm going to want to pattern the move copies as well. So I'm going to pick these two, oops, pick these two, and add them to the list so that I have duplicates in those locations as well. So now I have duplicates. And as I've created these duplicates, you can see that my tree has gotten rather lengthy. So at this point, I might want to do a little bit of organization. Once I start to have several bodies that I can kind of group together, I like to start using subfolders in my solid body folder. So to create a subfolder, you can select one or more bodies and simply right click. And you'll see that in your menu, you'll have the option to add folder. Let's call this Team B. Okay, and let's see this one. What did I have in Team B? So move copy, or we'll call this actually, I'm going to rename this and we're going to call this folders because this is the copy. So I'm going to put that there and we'll put the other one there. And then we're going to put all of the blanks from my pattern. So here's blank. Blank, 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 blank. Okay, and next folder I'll make, so let's see here. This is gonna be my marker, and I don't really need a folder for him. That's the grass, that's the lid. Bottom, bottom. Here's my first one, all right, right click. I'll say add to folder, and we'll call this one Team B. 
All right, and as I expand him out, I can now find the other components for that team and left click drag and put them in the folder as well. So let's see here, where's the other one? Right click, add to folder, this will be team A. And one, two, three, and add those. Oop, I didn't get them. All right, and it looks like I just missed one of my holders, so I'll go up and put him in there. Now, the nice thing about using these folders, once you've kind of got everything organized, is you can actually control some of the display options at the folder level. So if I want to, I can now hide all of team A, and I can hide all of team B. Did I miscombine? I did. All right. I can easily move these out. There we go. Okay, team A, team B, and I can hide both of these. So now I'm just holding all of the, or showing, sorry, all of the copies, and I'm going to use these copies to make the um, pockets inside the foam holder. So for this, again, we discussed using combine, but then I'd have to create a um, exact size pocket and just to show you another tool that can be used I'm going to instead use a feature called indent and what indent is going to allow me to do is the same thing I would do with the cut by establishing a main body and then removing some tool bodies but in addition to that I can actually cut a um, offset inside here. So I'll just make a small two millimeter offset and I'll have some wiggle room now when I'm putting these back into their box. Now when I'm using the indent I'm using this cut feature again to create an offset. Now the indent will not consume the tool bodies because this isn't one of those boolean operations so I still have my tool bodies available so again this is where you might need to hide a folder really nicely. Okay, and I can now show the other teams and the marker, maybe I'll even label this guy so I can tell what he is. Marker. Um, and I have my completed set now. So now that we're all finished with our set, let's do a little bit of cleanup I always like to go ahead and minimize all of my folders. And since I do have some of these folders, I can use these to apply appearances to some of the groupings of my solid bodies. So for instance, if I have team B here, I can go over to appearances, apply appearance, and give this a blue shade. And I can come to team A and give team A a red shade. And I can also apply appearances down to some of my features if I want to. So maybe I'll make a white one on the notches. And I'll copy this to make sure that I get the exact same appearance on the others. If I do a control Q, those appearances will push through my pattern. And now I've got my bocce balls. So I would continue in this matter to um, add additional appearances to the other solid bodies in my part, but since we're getting short on time here, I'm just going to stop with that. Another thing I might want to do is to create an assembly file or individual part files from the components I've made here in my part file. I recommend using save bodies for this, and you can get to save bodies by right clicking on the solid bodies folder and you'll see save bodies in your menu bar. I recommend save bodies because not only can you save out copies of your bodies into individual part files, but you can also save out a copy of the assembly into an assembly file. So if you're interested in pushing these out to individual files, I strongly recommend using save bodies. And that's everything we're going to be doing with our bocce set. So what I'd like to do now is head back to the PowerPoint and recap the different design methods. With my bocce set, we used multi-bodies as intermediate steps through several different means. We used bridging when connecting the grass bodies. We used a tool body when indenting into our foam pad. 
We used Boolean operations when the combined feature was used for our markings on the bocce balls. We used patterning to create the solid bodies we needed for those markings. And we used local operations when we needed to isolate a certain feature to one of our bodies, such as the shell command. Our bocce set also showed us how we could use multi-bodies as assembly alternatives. Through our bocce set, we got better performance by eliminating mates and having all of our internal references in one single part file. The exception to that would be if you wanted to send it out to an assembly, and even then we would still be getting better performance because that would be a linear reference, whereas if you used a top-down assembly method, it would be more of a circular reference because the assembly has to go to the part, and then the part has to go back to the assembly to make sure it's updated. So even if you save out an assembly after you've made your multi-body design, you will be getting better performance. We also used unique features such as combine, intersect, and indent, and patterns. I only feel that it's fair to discuss some of the disadvantages or limitations with multibodies as assembly alternatives as well. So for instance, we will not have the option of free dragging. If you need to move a body inside a part file, you can use the move copy command to relocate it. We can also not insert a part file into a drawing and show a bomb, which will reflect all of the bodies inside our part file. If you need a bomb to list out all of the individual components, you can use the save body command to push those out to individual files or to an assembly file and then pull those into your detailed drawing to show a bomb. There's currently an enhancement request out for the ability to choose merge result off by default. I think even from watching this short presentation, you can see how this functionality could really improve multi-body design methods. If you're interested in implementing this, you can go into your customer portal and vote for SBR 855606. That concludes my Lunch and Learn presentation on multi-bodies. Thank you so much for attending. I hope everybody was able to maybe learn something new or pick up a new tip and trick. If you have any questions, please feel free to comment in the GoToMeeting and I will do my best to address them in the time we have left. Thank you again. Don't forget to check us out on YouTube, Twitter, Facebook, and our blog for more great content by clicking on the links in the description below.